They've been through so much. You're at rock bottom. You've hit the bottom. I don't know. Your grass will get straws. Kamor Lee is sharing some shocking details about Diddy's twin daughters, saying that Diddy has exploited them as well as his other children. Kamora was Kim Porter's best friend for years, and after Kim's passing, she took on a motherly role to Kim's kids, especially the twin daughters she shared with Diddy. Because of how protective she is, Kamora has a few opinions on Diddy's role as a parent. She believes that Diddy exploited his daughters and his other children. Knowing that Diddy had some creepy parties, especially those called freak offs, fans are obviously worried about what this means for his daughters. Were they forced to take part in the freak offs or did something more sinister happen? Allegedly, Diddy's exploitation of his children started after Kim passed away. His treatment of his children and what's happened to him have allegedly left them traumatized. Kamara also claimed that it would take years of therapy for them to be able to live their lives normally again. So how did Diddy allegedly exploit his children? Well, the first rumor started when Diddy failed to get out on bond. He thought that he could pay a fee and then spend his time at home while he waited for his trial to begin. Two judges denied his bail, however, deeming him too much of a flight risk. There's definitely some logic behind this ruling too. For one, Diddy has a lot of private jets that he could easily use to flee the country. In fact, when the FBI was raiding his mansion, there was even speculation that he had fled already. His plane was being tracked to somewhere in the Caribbean islands. Diddy later explained that he was flying to see his daughters. There's your first hint that Diddy has no problem using his children to cover his tracks. Perhaps he was there to see his daughters, who were allegedly in the Bahamas for spring break. But it sure was pretty convenient that he decided to visit them the moment the FBI showed up at his house. Regardless, the judges knew that Diddy could easily escape the country with a jet if he so wished. There was another concern too. Diddy had a lot of money and resources that he could use to pull some strings and also escape the country. Whether it was through bribes or calling in old favors, he had the means of sneaking out. So the judges basically said that he was gonna sit in jail and wait until his trial. Now what's really interesting about this is the bail plan that Diddy and his lawyers presented to the judge. It's basically an agreement between Diddy and the court. If Diddy followed the listed rules, he wouldn't have to wait for his trial in jail. Diddy listed the bail he'd be happy to pay, which was $50 million. He then broke down the amount, showing the judge how he could back it up if he broke bail. He also listed some of his children, as well as his mother, as co-signers. If he broke bail, then they'd pay for him. Again, Diddy basically put his kids in a tough spot. Whether he planned to skip bail or not, the financial hardship would fall on his children, as well as his mom. This doesn't exactly make him look like the best dad in the world. There was another section, however, that was even more puzzling. Diddy also surrendered his passport and listed out certain members of his family who had also surrendered their passports. The twins were listed. Why would Diddy say that the court could take his daughter's passports? Well, the running theory is that Diddy has a lot of offshore businesses that he operates in his children's name. It's all part of Rico Enterprises, which he owns. So if the court were to start snooping in his businesses, they might find that some of his children's names are attached to them outside of the United States. To ensure that the court didn't think he was gonna use one of their passports to flee the country, he and his lawyers decided to surrender their passports too. Now, it's a little odd to put a business in the name of one of your children if they have nothing to do with it. It's the sort of thing that suggests a white collar crime might be happening. While it's not uncommon for business owners to open businesses using their children's names, this practice always warrants a second look. It's also exploitative. If one of those businesses ends up being legally questionable, that could impact the child. Their name gets pulled into it all. Diddy could be damaging his children's future. Now that's just the potential exploitation of his daughters. When it comes to his sons, the exploitation is even worse. Lil Rod, for example, filed a lawsuit against Diddy, including his son, Justin. He said that Diddy and Justin had him cover up a shooting. According to his lawsuit, Justin was with a friend known as G in the studio. They eventually went to the bathroom where an argument broke out. Things became so heated that Justin pulled out a firearm and shot G. Lil Rod said that the injury G received was so serious that the medical staff was talking about having to cut off his leg. Diddy quickly showed up at the scene and when the police arrived to record what had happened, he changed the story. Diddy took Lil Rod to the side and told him that he was gonna lie to the police and tell them that G had been hit in a drive-by incident. Lil Rod didn't stop his claims there either. He also listed Justin as a defendant in his lawsuit, stating that Justin was part of Rico Enterprises. His main role was to help his dad find underage girls for his freak off parties. These are allegations right now, so it's unconfirmed just how involved Justin was with Diddy's parties, if they're true, however. Then it just goes to show that Diddy had no problem bringing in members of his own family to help with his crimes. Knowing that the alleged things that happened at these freak off parties were wrong, Diddy still had no problem getting his son involved. 
Why? Well, Diddy probably thought that the only people he could really trust were his own family. That's especially true if Diddy spent years grooming his children, particularly his sons, to be the same sort of man that he is. Once he got his son involved with the stuff he was into, he was basically exploiting Justin from there. Now, Christian seems to be just like his dad based on the allegations surrounding him. One of the biggest problems he's facing is a lawsuit from a woman who accused him of physically harming her while they were on a yacht. The lawsuit alleges that the stewardess took the job on Diddy's yacht because she believed that the outing was going to be wholesome. When she arrived, however, it was anything but wholesome. She noticed immediately that there were a lot of passed out women on the boat. Christian took an interest in her immediately and offered her a drink. She didn't take it though because she believed that the drinks were spiked. It would explain why all the other women were passed out. Throughout the cruise, Christian kept harassing her. He touched her inappropriately and he kept trying to be intimate with her. At one point, he allegedly got so frustrated that he pushed her down and became violent. Now, why didn't anyone stop it or help her? Well, according to the victim, it was because Diddy had paid off the captain of the yacht. He claimed not to see or hear anything. So clearly, Christian may not be too different from his dad when it comes to women. Is it possible that Diddy has used Christian's past problems to get him to do his bidding? It definitely seems possible as both Christian and Justin likely rely on the money that their father provides. As for Kimora's part in it all, well, she's never been a fan of Diddy's. When Kim passed away, Kimora believed that Diddy had something to do with it. It was Kimora and her daughter who discovered Kim's body after all. And at the time, it looked like she was just sleeping. Later, the coroner stated that Kim had passed away of pneumonia, but this reason never sat well with Kimora. Why would someone like Kim, who had a lot of resources, not go to the hospital if she was that sick? Why wouldn't she tell her closest friends that she was feeling under the weather? It didn't add up. So the idea of Diddy exploiting his children is no surprise to her since she also believes that he had something to do with her mother's passing. But what do you guys think? How deep into Diddy's alleged crimes do you think his children go? Did Diddy have something to do with Kim's passing? Let me know in the comments below.